Uh, hello, my name is Brydale Robinson. Uh, by trade, I'm a registered respiratory therapist. I currently work as a clinical coordinator for the respiratory care department at Northwestern Medicine in downtown Chicago. So my role uh, as a respiratory therapist in adult critical care is, is such an integral role. It's so important because we're working with patients not only from their admission, but we're working with patients all the way to their possible discharge, whether it be working with patients in the ER, in the ICU. Uh, we're also involved in their care and ending their lives as well. So we're kind of there from the beginning to the end and everywhere in between when it comes to working with patients in adult critical care, because we do so much for them outside of just treating their diagnosis. We're also there at the bedside, comforting them and comforting their families and working with the interdisciplinary team. I wanted to work with critically ill patients because I like the fast paced environment. I like the critical thinking skills that you have to develop. You're always using your brain while working in critical care, as well as I feel that you really can immediately see the difference that you make in, in a patient's life. Uh, it's it, the turnaround time on that. Sometimes it's very quickly, whether you're working in maybe the cardiothoracic ICU and you're admitting patients after their heart surgeries, or you're working in the neuro ICU and you're working with patients on exercising their lungs and getting some better lung function. It, it's, it's, really, it's really a rewarding experience working in critical care. It, it can be very, very stressful. It, do, it does have the stress side, but it's knowing what to do with the, do with the stress. Balancing self-care and being an RT comes down to knowing when to turn it off and knowing that it's much better for you to not take things home. Therefore, when you go to sleep, you rest, you wake up, you're fully, you're, you know, you're fully recharged to 100% and you're, and you're willing to give your all the very, very, very next day. It's also finding and forging good relationships with uh, colleagues and interdisciplinary staff that makes work much nicer. It makes work go much smoother as well as finding outlets, whether that be meditation. I, I like to do meditation. I like to ride my bike. I like to do home workouts. There's so many things you can do to kind of get that excess energy and the excess thoughts you may be having just out, just get it out. Job security and respiratory therapy is solid, solid, solid as a rock. You can't go wrong. There, were, there will always be something for you to do, somewhere for you to work, as well as things that may appeal to different people. If you want to work in a pulmonary function lab, you can work in a pulmonary function lab. If you want to work in adult critical care, you can work at a research institution. You can work in hyperbaric oxygen. You can work on a transport team. You can work with children. You can work in pulmonary rehab. There's so many different opportunities for, for those going into respiratory therapy. It's not just, um, there's not just one place for you to work. There's so many different places you can go in places that you can help you grow and, and appeal to your interests. How I feel I'm making the difference in the lives of patients is not by only caring for them and helping them to achieve better health, through different devices and therapies that I have in my, in my in my toolbox, but it's also by being a caring and a compassionate individual and giving my best effort to every single person that I come in contact with and treating them as if they were my own family. Respiratory therapists are vital to the healthcare system because of how transformative we are and how once again flexible keyword flexible we are we're seen everywhere we can be an outpatient we can be an inpatient and we always have great ideas and we always bring something to the team we bring a very specialized perspective that not many other providers have because of the education that we received and i think that if if you go to go to a place and you don't see a respiratory therapist i would be very 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 surprised Advice I would give someone that's younger looking into health professions, especially respiratory care, would be work on your flexibility 
and your patience because many things that you want will not happen right when you want them to happen. But having, you know, just a strong sense of self-being and, and self-worth, you know that things will always come to fruition if you're working towards a degree or you're working towards, you know, helping others. I think just being very self-aware is going to be really, really important. And just know that working in critical care requires a lot of flexibility from you as a person because there's going to be many situations where there's going to be three people paging you and one person calling you all at the same time and it's just knowing how to prioritize and always just keep your cool if you're looking into any allied health professions respiratory therapy would definitely be a great contender respiratory therapists are known for being so well versed in what they do, bringing so much to the table, being great team team players, and providing some of the best best care to patients that that I've ever seen and that I've ever felt. Um, you can't go wrong. Um, yeah, can't awesome. go wrong. <laughs>
it's real easy to let it get to you. Like sometimes with COVID, one of the things we didn't talk about is when you have multiple deaths, right? You have patients, you've done everything you can possibly do and your, your docs and everybody's like, and, and they die anyway, a patient dies anyway. Well, there's only two things that are true that will happen to every person. You're gonna die and pay taxes. And I try to, I always say, I try to avoid both. So we have to realize that patients do die regardless of what we do, right? With COVID, because of the intensity level, we saw a lot more of that in a shorter amount of time. We saw huge amounts of successes and we had to make sure that we shared those successes. The music in a lot of patient places, uh, here we did, if somebody did well and went home, music played, right? That was cool because you're like, okay. And then you started to hear the music all the time. And it's like, all right. So you may have a couple patients die on your shift and it, and you go, okay. And then you, you keep going, but it does, it, it wears on you. So you got to make sure you're taking care of yourself with that self-care, but also realize all the good that we do as well. So if you're thinking of becoming an RT, do the work, learn. Respiratory therapists are very hands-on people, but there is that huge didactic component and that thirst for what's, what's new. We can't live where we were. If that was the case, 38 years ago when I graduated, I would have just stopped learning. I learn something new every day. So if, if you want to be in a field where you can continue to learn and grow, this is it, right? And you want to you wanna do the work, you want to learn, you want to put yourself out there, this is your place. So I'm John Inkrot, a registered respiratory therapist and adult critical care specialist with uh, Advent Health in Orlando, Florida. Uh, currently a part of the Advent Health Flight One transport team. Uh, we're a single aircraft program. Uh, we have also ground ambulances, so we do um, about 35, between 35 and 40,000 calls a year. The aircraft does roughly 900 flights a year. Uh, I'm part of, part of the adult team. We have an adult team, a pediatric team, and a NICU team. Um, all comprised of a RN and an RRD, and that's the configuration that we have had here at Advent for uh, 35 years. So I've been involved in respiratory therapy since 1992, graduated in 1993. Um, I'm a native Floridian. I've been uh, up in Cincinnati. I, I was up there for 15 years, uh, but I'm back home and this is where I'll stay. You know, I've always had a passion for aviation. Uh, even since I was a little kid, I used to go to the airport and watch airplanes with my grandfather. And I knew from an early age that I also wanted to take care of him. So uh, I even wrote in my second grade journal that I wanted to be an ambulance driver. So I kind of knew early on what I wanted to, to gear toward. <clears throat> when I had the opportunity to come to Advent Health, where they had RTs and RNs as their crew, I kind of jumped at the chance to be here and then when the, the spot came open for the team um, I interviewed for that and thankfully I got the spot so it's very rare for us as RTs to be involved with uh, rotor transport I know for the NICU and Peds folks it's a pretty uh, niche environment <clears throat> there's a lot more of those folks around the country but to have an RT on every adult that we do is pretty unique there's only a couple other programs in the country that do that so I was very fortunate to get in here and like I said it's been great you know, one of the biggest things for us is experience. And, you know, when, when we look at a candidate and we bring somebody into the team, um, we know at that point that you could probably be a very good respiratory therapist. The average experience on our team is about 16 and a half years. The requirements are five years with at least three years of critical care background. That can be ICU, ER, PACU, um, you know, any place that has that critical acuity. And it's critical that you kind of understand how to uh, perform as a respiratory therapist in the aircraft in a critical environment with one other person. You, know, you don't have that ICU group of people that you can that you can fall back on. It's just you and your partner. So there's a lot of critical thinking skills that we want you to bring to the team. 
but mostly it's for people that um, can function in a dynamic environment, have critical decision-making skills, and can do it with one other person, and that you're a team player. It's so important. You know, you could bring all this knowledge onto the team and not be a team player or somebody who's kind of a, you know, a thorn in people's side, and you're not going to work out because that's just not what we want on the team. You need to have, you know, somebody who's very focused and a team player. I, I know this is so cliche, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I just can't narrow one person down because I think I would I, I would hate to minimize some of the very basic calls that we do. Um, you know, whether if it's a you know a STEMI from one of our satellite facilities, it's a 10 minute flight. They're on room air and they just have you know a little bit of nitro going, or if they just need a little bit of morphine for pain. Um, it sounds so basic, but yet it's so important because those patients can crash very quickly too. And then you know we go to southeast and southwest florida to the miami area to the fort myers naples area and we get patients there on ecmo and and balloon pumps and you know nuclear event settings so those are very sick people too but i would hate to say one person in specific because you know what we offer these folks is the chance to come here get the care they need get back to their loved ones and sometimes to be quite honest with you heather we're their loved ones you know sometimes there is no family and you know that that can kind of hit home because you really whether it's a handhold or just a you know a, a little whisper in the ear everything's going to be okay you know that's what we that's what we offer so those are the most fulfilling moments to take care of your patients and to see them thrive and to see them get out of here and i think that goes back to the team dynamics and being able to function you know it's funny because um you get so used to the people that you work with we're a small team we have 15 people on our team and like i know when my nurses come in if they're having a bad day they know if i'm off it's just you you really start to develop this rapport with each other that you just know and you kind of you know you lock minds and you kind of function on that same level uh not to say that that's not the case in the icu but it's just a different environment where you have a lot more in the way of resources um up in the air you know here's what you have here's what's in the helicopter this is your limitation, these are your resources. You have to utilize those the best as possible. You know, some of the things in the ICU, that's what I said before, is that you're taking these RTs from the ICU, oh, I've got 20 years in the field and I've got ACCS and I've done this and done that, excellent. And you do it in that aircraft or in the back of that ambulance at 50 miles an hour bumping down the road or in the back of an aircraft where it's 98 degrees and you're sweating and your, your mask is slipping all over the place. There's just a lot of things that um, you know, when you put somebody in the back of that helicopter and you're flying backwards and it's a little turbulent, you know, these are all the things you need to think about that you just don't have to think about. I think that as a profession, you know, this profession has been so good to me and, and I have really uh, appreciated what it's given me. And I think I've put a lot into it and, and I try to explain to folks it's a return on investment. You will get out of what you put into it. If they're looking to get into respiratory therapy, like I said to these folks, focus on the health sciences, focus on your sciences and math, and you know, try and be engaged in some sort of extracurricular activity because I think respiratory therapists are leaders. I've always said, don't sweat till the RT sweats. And that can be in any situation, whether it's a code situation or whether it's you know any sort of uh, emergency situation or hazmat situation where we start to engage RTs. You know, no one sweats till the RT sweats because we are so specialized. To all my colleagues out there, thanks for everything that you do. We are a family. So appreciate everybody, you know, doing what they do and staying those long hours and taking care of these sick patients. You guys really make a difference. I think we all do and uh, we can be proud.